morning everybody rusty from the rusty razor have another shave of the day and today we're going to be doing crown and grins peach yeah if you're a peach guy hmm smells good very peachy leaves me kind of a peachy feeling oh yeah and we're going to be using the uh rockwell success with stranglets from paa First time I'm going to use these things. Uh, I got them from Eric over there. Uh, does it shave every, better every day or something like that? So, there we go. So, we're going to give these a try. See how they work out with this. I've heard good things and bad things about it. So, might as well give it a shot and see how it works out. So, how's your day going? Mine's another day in paradise. As they say, any day you wake up above the dirt, you're doing good. Alright. So. Nice scent. Uh, PA, or not PA. We're going to find out what those PAs are like. But Crown and Cranes, peach. Smells a little different from, I got the uh, Sterling peach. There's a slight difference in the scent between the two. I can pick up. So, but when it comes to uh, lathering up and quality, yeah, stuff works really good. All right, we got this uh, in the third number three plate for this one. Thank you, Sig. Yeah, how this works out. I think the last time I used a number four plate. It seemed to work good. Which I do. Where is it? Where is the number four plate? Yeah. It's kind of an interesting system. Most of you probably already know about it, but you, know, you just change out the, the plate. It's got a number on one side and another other side, so you just kind of... Figure out which one works best for you. I find that the number three is the magic number for me. The four is good. Now, if I had, let's say, gone 30 hours or more, right now it's been 24 hours of growth. So if I get into the higher number of hours of growth, see, I measure my growth in hours. Some people grow up in days. No. I'm one of those people that has to shave every day. It drives me crazy. Yeah, one of the things is really exasperated is it's like I got neuropathy in it. You know, so it gets in my it's in my face too. And I mean, longer hair on the face, just it's like, ugh, can't take it. Well, I just thinking that was this morning while I was eating breakfast was that about fishing it's like things you're sitting there eating and all of a sudden it's like you have a, a, a flashback to something and you're like fishing it's like when's the last time I went fishing it's been a while the last time I went fishing I went trout fishing in uh, Minnesota and went with my cousin actually two cousins two different cousins from one side one family and the other family so and we caught some uh, trout and, and uh, cooked them right, right there in the shoreline so it's been 2018, I think it was. A 
Labor Day weekend. Now the weather's warming up, maybe it's time to break the gear out again and go. I know there's a few fishermen out there that enjoy that activity. Getting out there. Well, I just remember the days of it's like if there was a nice day or even halfway nice day, if it wasn't raining or anything. We lived we basically had access to our own lake. You have to worry about people fishing on it, just us. Go out and it's like well, we had a boat out there, we had a 16 foot cedar strip. Didn't even have a motor for it. We had the motor if we were going to move it to a different lake where we needed a motor, but just throw a tarp, bring it up on the shore, throw a tarp over it, and call it good. And I would uh, row to where we need to be, and catch northern walleyes, Big perch, panfish. Trout. The lake was about 90 feet deep in them. Uh, deep is in. It was like a hole. It went from one foot to 90 foot and about 20 feet distance out to the edge of the lake. It's like straight down. But yeah, you could get some, I'd pull out typically a five to 10 pound walleyes and northerns on a daily basis. It would, uh, run two lines one line that would be right off the uh weed bed which is the rice rice beds and i'd be catching panfish with one pole and my heavy set pole i would uh, uh run if i caught a decent sized perch i'd had a slip bobber system which my grandfather made uh, the bobbers himself out of wood and I'd set that we're about five feet of depth put a perch on it and because you always catch a perch or two and put it on the slip bobber and so it was just right running around the edge of the rice beds and northerns and walleyes would come up and just chomp and uh it always worked out pretty good i always brought home two or three northern walleyes every day i went out along with about 30 panfish kept uh ate a lot of fish there's a family of five sec actually the seven of us but uh, a 10 pound walleye wouldn't last it's like we'd eat two of those in a setting you know just chow down so he ate all the fish you wanted mom would fry it up on the stove we had our own made our own butter and well, we had some garlic or uh, curry. Make some butter sauce out of it, and you could dip your fish in too. 
A lot of good food. Maybe about five days a week we had four or five days. We'd have fish. Typically how it worked out was I would fish one day, come back just in time for chores, and uh Living on a farm, you always had chores to do at night and morning. And the next day, we had the fish that I caught. In the, mostly in the summertime. Wintertime, it was uh, only in the weekends. It, was, you know, it got dark around 4 o'clock. Uh, we come home from school, it'd be dark, so didn't do much fishing, but on the weekends. And when winter hit and everything froze over, it's like you go out there and had the ice house out there and go ice fishing, cut the uh, bring a chainsaw with you and cut a hole in the ice and Set it up and go to town. And we also had to supplement our diet. It's like in the fall, go um, hunting all the A lot of rabbit, deer, venison. Yeah, you shoot a hare, snowshoe hare, and those things weigh about five, ten pound range. It's pretty big. Get some of those bigger ones. A lot of meat, two of those would feed the family. Well, if it's starting to rain outside. Done. All right. Yeah. Okay, those stranglets doing a good job so far. I wasn't feeling any tugging like I've heard a lot of people say, but uh, I didn't have much. You know, it was like 24 hours of growth right on the dot. But I'm not feeling anything. It's going to be the second and third shave that uh, determines really uh sterling peach how it's gonna work out if it's gonna be uh how many shaves i'll get out of it uh 
Not bad. I smell like I just rubbed in a warm peach. Well, if you, you want to see the bar, right? It's like, there you go, sterling peach. All right, so that was the shave of the day. Not bad. I didn't feel any stinging other than just right here. Just a little bit. All right, Crown and Crane, peach. Excellent soap. Lathers up nicely. Gives you a nice cushion. Mmm, smells good. All right, so that was Crown and Crane's peach, along with a uh, Rockwell 6S with PAA Stranglets. Did I get that right? There we go. Got the little space alien on there. There we go. So that is the shave of the day. All right, so we'll see you later. Hucker, I'll see you out.